So we get over there, go to, so figure we'll try, try to pin these little wad of them, I don't know, about 50 cows at these with some calves and stuff that need stripped off but he just wants these two big yearling bull calves but they won't ever come in so we it's just me and him and we needed more people we didn't know what we were getting into the man wasn't going to pay nobody but me and my buddy so long story short we got everything pinned and we got everything stripped off we just took them two yearling bull calves got them where we needed them kicked everything else out and we did it all horseback and these cows ain't never hard hardly ever seen a horse but everything for the most part went good the pins were very small not built for a horse but they were pipe uh, so we got got the bulls in there where we needed them I thought well that one as smooth as could be you know no wrecks now all we got to do is throw the horses in the front of the trailer load these two bulls you know back up to the chute load these two which by the way was a, like a dairy chute no it's not a squeeze chute just a head catch that didn't work very good but just back up to the chute run these two bulls up in here with the horses already on the front of the trailer you know shut the first cut first cut gate and we're good to go we're high five freaking cowboys did you see that like we're thinking it's going to take like all day just to get these two suckers pinned we're going to have to rope them and tie them down and you know drag them to the trailer and end up choking his cattle or something we're like nah it's done you know they're already kicked out Threw our two horses saddled in the first cut, back up to the what he called his chute, and and it wasn't made right, so we couldn't. We I got butterfly gates on my trailer, so if you know anything about that, you back up. You got to leave yourself room. You got to have your gates open, but you can't back up so far that you can't shut the gate because once you load the cattle, the cattle turn right back around on you, run right back out. So we back up there best we could, open one butterfly gate. Or, you know, you open your gates, you bring them back to a fence or panel or to the chute, whatever. Well, there's a little daylight. That's just the way it was. Just a little daylight between each side of the butterfly gate and the chute or the fence. And Bill, he says, well, you just stand there. You just stand behind the gate, and I'll just be on a foot because the pins weren't big enough. I mean, you could ride a horse in this little pin where we had them pinned up to where they, the little alley they had to come down to go through the chute, but a horse had just gotten away, and they were nuts. I mean, they were <laughs> cuckoo. They never seen a horse, they ain't never seen a man, they never been pinned. Some of y'all know. I mean, they're losing it, running into the pipe fence, just going crazy, trying to kill themselves if you look at them. All right, buddy, so here we go. I'll stand behind the gate because I'm the young guy. So he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey bull, hey bull, hey bull. And they're running him up the freaking fence and everything. Finally, we get him coming down. All right, you ready? I said, I'm ready, brother. So I'm standing. Well, you can't stand right behind the gate because they'll see you. You got to kind of duck down. But you got to be there to pop up just in time. So if they do think about going through that gap, they go, oh, man. So that's what I did. And the first one, first bull went up in there. I mean, they're right head to tail. The second one won't go. Well, the first one's standing around there in a circle. First bull says, hey, screw this, I'm a traitor. I'm coming back out. So they see the daylight. So I, hey, bull. Bull said, hey, Jake. Wham. <laughs> like to kill me. Actually, it didn't smash me. I seen what was coming, so I hopped up on the fence and gate. Wham. So they're back out in this lot. But the gates are shut. Truck, we're in a, trucks in a lot. Gates are shut. Trucks backed up to the chute. Horses are in the front of the trailer, with the cut gate already shut. We're already backed up to the chute. <laughs> Freaking cowboys! We don't need to pull. Get in the truck. It's hot. You know we're not freaking getting in the truck. Pulling out, going, undoing the cut gate, getting the horses, uh, tightening our saddles back up. Blah blah blah. Just to run two stupid bulls back in through this gate so we can run we'll just do it on a foot it's easy we're cowboys we're not wasting time not good <laughs> uh first time wasn't too bad you know if, if you gave them enough room and you know they wouldn't come to you and they we got them back through the gate they needed to go through to where we could load it again same thing happened again uh saw the daylight 
Now they know how to get out. Those of you that know, know. Now they know, well, I can bust that down. So I ain't lying like, I don't know, three or four times <laughs> we went through this. I almost died. He's a Christian, man. He's cussing. I mean, you know the rule about working cattle that don't count if you're working cattle when you cuss. <laughs> But I mean, I mean, this guy, he's, he's mellow. He's just an old cowboy. He's been there, done that. He don't get wound up working cattle. He's, you, I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, holy crap, man, Bill. And I'm like, they're going to kill me because you're still behind them. But I mean, it's, it's bad. But we're still on a foot just because we're too lazy to pull the trailer out. And now we're going to prove a point. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to just do the easy thing and pull out a little bit, unload our horses and pin them and, so, uh, we got the job done without unloading the horses. My buddy almost died, literally. Well, not literally. He's got a real bad knee. He just had surgery on. I forgot to mention that. Had a bad knee, he just had surgery on because I asked him to come drag some calves on a place. He said, I'll come drag calves, but I can't flank because I'm not healed up and blah, blah. Well, that one of them suckers, I mean, liked to kill him after they busted the gate down one of the times and we were trying to run him through on foot run because he don't give my buddy i mean bulls coming to him he don't give he, cattle don't scare him he been around over enough time he holds his freaking ground well by that time he was mad and holds his ground and and he's from me to here from the pipe fence and that sucker i said bill he's gonna come to you because they done come to me three or four times and i just jumped the fence and he was hauling around screaming and cussing didn't see him come try to eat me and he's he ain't coming i said he's coming i said he's gonna come eat you you better watch you but, hey boy hey boy and that sucker got underneath him old 60 some year old and under his butt and he's he's been hit enough he kind of knows not to go down <laughs> on his belly so he's boom, wham, wham, gets him to the fence and just whoosh, flips him you know just does a complete flip but right on his bad knee and i'm thinking oh, i just killed bill oh <laughs> And he's got a beautiful young wife. And, I'm, and she likes me, but she ain't gonna like me no more. Because it dang sure didn't pay enough to kill Bill. And he, and I mean, we're, we were hot and out of breath. And, but it, did he flipped him over? I mean, it, and it looked, he landed right on it. Just, how do you, I ain't been in front of a church. But over appetite. That's how he flipped him. And I went, Bill, are you all right? And he grabbed a hold of that top thing and uh, put all his weight on his good leg. I'm fine. <laughs> so we got him pinned. Uh, so that's the story. There's more than one way to do things. If we'd have just got on our horse and done it any of other different ways uh, and, and went a little slower, because we did get to going a little too fast in situations like that, the matter you get, the harder you push on them, the matter the hotter they are, the worse it's going to get. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, the reason I thought about that is watching this deal yesterday, man. There's everybody. There were six teams. Two person, two people do a team. Everybody's doing things different. I mean, a little bit the same as far as horsemanship and, and knowing where to be in this and that. But everyone's using different methods. And I'm sitting up there and I'd see one feller do something. And I'd tell my buddy, I, I said, man, he's going too fast. You know, he needs to stop and let him look at that or blah, blah, blah. And I think, he ain't going to make it. This sucker's going to blow up. And then I go to watching this other guy, and I'd say, all right, you know, you need to put a little pressure on him. You know, he's, he's looked at that long enough now. He's blinking, you know, make him take a step. Or, you know, I, I, they ain't even going to get this sucker. Get on this sucker, you know what I mean? But by the end of the day, y'all are horseback on the horses. None of the horses have been started yesterday. They're all riding around outside these pens they're all doing different things they're all at different stages as far as what they know but the end result was the same all these horses were started doing it different ways some were easier and some were harder and and being a christian is the same thing people think it's because they've been taught well it's this way you've got to do this you've got to do this if you do this you're burning in hell and taking everyone with you and blah 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 and, and you have to stand up and say this and you got to hold your hands a certain way and you got to do the heartburn pump and the hi hey, how you doing buddy or whatever during music and i mean it and if you like that great but that ain't in the bible i mean there's 
there's one way to be a Christian as far as, as the Bible says verbatim. Uh, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. That means you're a Christian. That means you believe. That, that's verbatim. And I, I don't know where it says it, but I know it's in there. And that's what it says. So you get to that point, and then from there on, there's a million different ways to, to live out your Christianity, to get, to get uh, you know, the job done. The other thing that that been rolling around in my head is it takes a, a lot of parts to do great things. Uh, watching this deal go on yesterday, there's so many people helping and volunteers, uh, you know, from the concession stand to the guys setting up and taking down panels and everything in between. You can't do great things without a lot of working, moving parts. Uh, whether it's whether it's in church, uh, whether it's starting a cult, uh, whether it's anything, you just you can't do thing. Every thing that's not just you has a lot of parts. That sounded retarded. Every if it ain't. If it ain't, big things have lots of moving parts. They all got to work together. You follow me? Here, here, I'll tell you what. Bring all this together and get your dumb self off the stage in Colorado, Jake. Uh, here's, here's the deal. Uh, where is this? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is, was, was supposed to bring it all home, and I, and I hope it does. What it is, is, is they're talking about the gifts that we all, different gifts that we all have as Christians, as human beings. Whether you're a Christian or not, God made you. Sorry. Still true. And the things that you're good at, that you're passionate about, God gave it to you. If you don't believe that, sorry. It's still true. That's, I mean, we're all different. Look at us. But we're all good at some things. Uh, other, some of us are good at other things. But here's the deal. Uh, Starting at verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit gives them out, distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. You follow me? There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it's the same God who's at work and the work you're doing. You follow me? Nothing happens without God allowing it. Now, even God allows sin. But we ain't getting into that because I'm not the preacher and that's not the point I was trying to make. <laughs> Listen to this, talking about the body of Christ and I'll shut up. If the foot should say, because I ain't a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body, right? It's still part of the body. If the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? You get where he's going with this? If the whole body was starting cults at the cult starting demonstration in clinics, where would the concession stand be? The concession stand would be closed. It takes different parts of the same body, of Christ and of the church, to come together. Uh, the last thing, the last verse says this. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. You follow me? All right, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm done. <laughs>